Alright, time for another DraftPhysics.com video presentation. So, we're back on the Veritasium claims, and um, the story just, they, they, no one's getting it, you know, what the real argument is. Veritasium is basically saying that induction, the tiny little field effect that's created when you put current through a wire, and you create a field, a change in the field, and the change in the field can be received by another wire, and that other wire can be <coughs> electrified by the change in the field, and it lasts for an instant, and then it's over. It makes a change, the other wire adapts to the change, and that's it. So unless you have an alternating current, you keep making a change, the end of the field effect. Okay, so... I guess we'll have to draw it. So anyway, on the website, <clears throat> I do have this debate in the pieces of it. Not everybody's video, not all the videos, blah, 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 blah. And so I'll put this uh, electric boom has made a response where he's talking to Derek, his friend, about it. And it's just such a pile of crap. Sorry. I mean, the conversation isn't even close to what they're really arguing. And Electric Boom, as usual, um, is such a pussy. He's just completely, you know, just like in the Professor Lewin thing, he's pretending there's agreement. Because that's better for business, I guess. Uh, you know, and that's all. That's all there is. <laughs> all right. So, leave us go to the video. Uh, let's go to the board. Um, so, the simple arrangement is you have a wire... You're going to do something to this wire. You have a wire over here with a light bulb, blah, blah, blah. Okay, you're going to energize this with a battery, you know, plus, minus, blah, blah, blah. And so instead, you know, the argument that Veritasium is making is, oh, yeah, well, I can make the wires really long, and therefore the electricity can't get to the light bulb for at least a second or more if I go halfway to the moon. And uh, But the light bulb will light sooner than that. Well, duh. Yes, this field effect happens, okay? Then when you... Put electricity through this wire, you change the surface of the wire in the sense that it reflects the field differently, and you've changed the field. That's all you've done. You've changed this field. And this goes forever, but obviously gets very weak. So the closer these wires are, the more induction you'll get. The further away they are from each other, the less induction you'll get. <coughs> Just basic rules. So yes, the instant you turn on the power, the light bulb will light because the light, the the field effect is, uh, you know, going to be so tiny in amount of time. The speed of light across this tiny distance between the wires, a meter or whatever. So yeah, it lights, but it lights for one millionth of a second, right? One billionth of a second, right? For one millionth of a second, it has electricity, and then it's over. The change has been accepted. The other wire now is that the same pressure as this wire in terms of the field effect. And they're both just going to say, that's the end of the game. <clears throat> now, if you kept turning the voltage on and off here, okay, um, then you can turn the voltage on and off here. Okay, so yes. And so you could keep the light bulb lighting. And what was happening here, okay, wouldn't be very important because you're already doing it here. All right. <clears throat> I think it still would be important in terms of the amount of amperage. So you're not going to get the full amperage, the full brightness of the light bulb until this effect kicks in. The amount of the light here is tiny through this effect. And if you want it to light brightly, you're going to have to wait, even for the alternating current, you're going to have to wait for it to go all the way through the wire and get here to light it brightly. So that's just another fact. I mean, I don't think that's disputable. I don't think it's arguable. So anyway, this, so this whole argument is, is that somehow Veritasium is saying that this induction effect is creating the movement of the electrons through this wire and of course it's not <laughs> of course it's going from the source to the destination and then ultimately back to the real destination the battery um yeah so so that's the that's what's being argued and so electric boom was sort of sticking with the argument that now the wire is essential Without the wire, you're not playing the game. The, the electrons are moving through the wire. The wire is really important, blah, blah, blah. And now he's sort of just vacillating and wishy-washing. So we'll play some of the crappy video. And uh, I'll show you the wishy-washy. 
All right, so this is about 19 minutes. Uh, Strange interaction. Yeah, you can't, you can't disc. Too loud for me. So this has to go way down. All right, sorry. Discriminate like that, it's always <laughs> feels. Only two things are forever, yeah, love and so Liberty Mutual, annoying. customizing your car insurance so you only pay for. Yeah, these videos are just full of ads. Electric boom. Uh, these science communicators have to make a big fat living. They can't just make a moderate living. Against each other, close or far. Right, so the field is always, uh, every electron is in a field, and all you're really talking about is a field. That is, the universe is hitting it. You're in a field. You're sitting here right now, wherever you're sitting, and you're being hit by fields. Okay, changes in fields. There's photons that you can see and photons you can't see, all right? And you're constantly being bombarded, and the fact is you're constantly reflecting those fields. And if I put electricity through you, you will reflect the fields differently. What you'll reflect will change. And now you can change something else's, the field around something else. When you change, you change the field that's affecting something else. I mean, it's... That's how it really works. Yeah, it is that question of like, uh, I don't know, is, is near field versus far field, is that a, a, a worthwhile distinction? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, it's a worthwhile distinction in, in the sense that, yes, we know the field degrades, uh, you know, very, very rapidly. And so, yeah, it's kind of important. Uh. ...to make. And that's really what this question was meant to tease out. It was meant to tease out the, the question of like, do you think that uh, electrons in the wire are are physically sort of carrying the energy or well why don't we talk about atoms in the wire because that's what the atom the, the, the wire is really made out of and what are the atoms doing and the atoms are the ones doing theoretically the reflecting in the sense that you're you have positive and negative charges and you're changing the position of those charges in the atom when you put electricity through a wire and by changing their position, you change the pattern, what they reflect to the rest of the universe. But you have to change them for them to reflect something different. They can't reflect something different till they've been changed. Or is it the fields around them which carry the energy? And I think that's, that was the point of the... Th so the only thing, that, that there's no point here in the sense that your point was that somehow induction is the same as conduction. That's what he did. Okay, his video is basically saying it's all induction, when clearly, no, the big part of transferring electricity or transferring energy isn't going to be through induction, it's going to be through conduction. The conduction is going to do the real work. Not experiment. Right. And I, I don't disagree with you. I just think that... Uh, yeah, it's just, I don't disagree, except I have a, pretty much the, the same old theory I had before, and now I'm just going to sit there and say somehow we agree when we really don't. Both of our thoughts exist together. None of them is wrong. Oh, yeah, none of them's wrong, except one of them's right and one of them's wrong. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just such nonsense to sit there. You know, at one point <clears throat> earlier... Uh, Veritasium and his glibs, you know, he's just so glib, he's just so, so fucking glib, um, in manner, um, says, well, what's the difference? And, uh, you know, and then uh, Mandy guy, or whatever his name is, uh, so chimes in and says, well, does the truth matter? It'd be nice to know the truth. And now all of a sudden the truth is, yes, it's wishy and it's washy. Okay. Ugh. You're just like, fuck. I mean, could this be more patronizing? Could this be more insulting to everyone's intelligence that we're just going to pretend they're not disagreeing about anything? And the fact is, is the, the Mindy guy, Mandy, whatever, can't even figure out what the real discussion is, which is Veritasium saying induction is what's causing uh, everything. And clearly the rational people know, no, the wire is really important. The conductor is really important. No, I think electrons and fields are existing together in the same environment, right? Yeah. Let me ask you this question. In a traditional way of teaching circuits, you would say right. the charge comes along, uh, drops off its energy in the load. There, it doesn't just drop off its energy in the load. So this is the part where it doesn't even drop it off to its neighbor. 
So this is one of the elements where they just they leave out all the how exactly do electrons and in the context of electrons as part of atoms convey whatever this is this pressure and that's the part they just no one goes near so I'll go near it I probably should erase all right now I could use different analogies so I'll use it the analogy of water okay an uncompressible liquid so if you understand something it's uncompressible and you're gonna it's in a tube the tube's full of the uncompressible liquid, and you're going to push in more uncompressible liquid. Now, what can happen? You can either expand how big the pipe is, you know, the, the hose can get fatter, and that'll absorb some of the energy of the pressure, or the pressure has to go forward and move through the mechanism. Now, clearly, even though water's a non-compressible liquid, I can't instantaneously push water in one side and have a, the pressure instantaneously show up at the other side. So that's where the fields come in. That's where the electrons move closer to each other. There's a field effect that takes a little time to build up. The field effect that builds up and the electrons are pushed apart again. All right, because they're, they're repelling each other. And so that's the cushion. Okay, that's what, that's what constantly is happening. And so I would argue that when you're pushing electricity, okay, into a wire, so you have an uncompressible liquid that's already full, okay, its, it's space is full, and they have a certain pressure. So let's draw the atom big, just for an example. And now you're going to push in some more pressure, just even a half of an electron. You pushed in a half more electron. So it's an uncompressible space in the sense that this is a reflection. That reflection is going to do what to this atom, in the sense that the, it has electrons and protons. It's pushing the electron into the atom, all right, changing the pressure of the atom itself. What's it going to do? Well, that means the other pieces have to all push out. So if one pushes in, the rest push out. Now, that could be connected to this atom, or this atom, or this atom. Now, the obvious truth would be is that as the pressure comes in here as, say, a 10, okay amount of pressure this one's only going to get say two and this one will get four and this one will get uh, the remaining four right yeah okay so you're gonna it's gonna spread the pressure and then this one's going to have pressure okay this is a 10 pressure this one's a zero this atom's at zero it's going to share the pressure so in a sense this one's going to go down to a two and this one's going to go from zero to two so you see the pressure has to be shared as it migrates. This one can't give up 10, okay? Just so that's, I guess, where I'm, I'm sort of saying it doesn't really give up 10. You know, it can only s remain a five, and then this becomes a two, and this becomes a one, and this becomes a two. So it's spreading the five, other five. So everything has to equalize. You have to be equal with your neighbors. And so whatever you do, you spread it. And it spreads out, <coughs> okay, obviously. And the only two places it can go, right, are to the surface. That is, you can expand the surface a little bit, uh, and this direction. It has to go where there's a bunch of zeros, okay? So there's a bunch of zeros out here. So the pressure out here can become 5 and 5, you know, outside the wire. And the pressure in here is still going to be the initial pressure, which was 10, okay? And it's just going to keep migrating as it, you know, 10 as I keep pushing the, this further in, right? This doesn't stop pushing, so it keeps pushing. So this 10 is with this 5, and that becomes a 7. And then this 10 with a 7 becomes a 9, until it equalizes to 10. And so it, that's how it's migrating through. So it's changing all the atoms eventually. Now, if you have a very high voltage that is very high pressure, I would argue that you can push through without hitting too many atoms. Not all the atoms will be affected. So you'll just change the pressure around a few atoms and you can get a small amount of current. That is, you'll affect a very small number of the atoms in the material because all of this pressure won't have to be relieved this way because it's going so well this way. It's moving so well this way that it doesn't need to go this way and this way. All right. But you're really changing all the atoms, and that's why you're changing, say, you're, you know, that's how you make a magnet, frankly. So you've got to change atoms to make a magnet. You've got to change all the shape of all the atoms have to now look like iron mag atoms in a way. So when you put electricity through, um, you know, 
uh, different metals, um, you can cause them to become, you know, to create a magnetic field. And how are they doing that? Well, it's because they're basically doing something similar to what iron, you know, magnetized iron is doing in terms of the shape or configuration of the iron. And it the, just means they're reflecting just like the magnet. The magnet is not producing energy. It's not making energy. It's merely reflecting the energy that comes into it back out in a different form, a different configuration. It's the same energy going in and out of the magnetized steel as the unmagnetized steel. The difference is just the shape, the, the appearance, what is being reflected. So if the uh, blue and red light was going in, you're saying that you know the magnet is basically saying only the red light will be reflected and the blue light will be converted into red light. And then you can understand how a magnet works. It's taking the same energy, it's just changing what it looks like. By changing what the energy looks like, somebody else is going to see it, okay, and they're going to be affected by it because they're sensitive to red rather than blue. Or if they're sensitive to blue rather than red, they're going to disappear or appear based on what color you see. Now, I don't want to get into too much complexity, but I mean, the, you know, it's the migration of this pressure through the wire. The wire is being pressurized by the extra electrons you're shoving in. And the pressure spreads basically just how you would spread it. You, you know, somebody pushes on you, then you push on the people around you. And then they push on the people around them. And then they push on the people around them. And that's how the pressure is spread. This one gets, you know, like I said, it goes to a, you know, it absorbs some of the pressure. This one loses some of the pressure. Then the pressure is, keeps coming in and more pressure. So it goes from 5 to 7 to 9. It just increases how much pressure it's under. And so slowly but surely, all of the pressure moves through the wire. But it starts off, you know, nothing goes instantaneously to 10 volts. It goes to 10 volts on a line because it starts off at 1, 2, 3, 4. It has to, the pressure takes time to migrate through the wire as the complete pressure, the con constant pressure. The initial pressure will be lower than the constant pressure. All right. I mean, these are huge distinctions. The field that the wire creates doesn't affect the wire. That field is its reflection. The light the Earth reflects to the universe doesn't affect the Earth. The Earth isn't being affected by what it's reflecting to the universe. It's affected by what's coming at it. The light reflecting off the moon, for example. That's affecting the Earth. You know, minorly, but it does. Um, yeah. That's a huge distinction just glossed over in this mush. And again, mainly because these people can't get what Veritasium's arguing, which is he thinks induction is the function, when that's just a side effect. The induction is just a side effect of electricity. It's not the way electricity functions. And then goes back to the battery. Oh, well, put the put the video back on. Uh, And right. you could ask a question of the students like, <clears throat> okay, so which way are these electrons carrying energy as they come back to this battery? And I don't know if the answer would... So, so again, it's not about coming back. It's about having a place to go. So if the battery doesn't, if you don't connect the place for the electrons to go, then the pressure can't go there. If there's pressure, it can't go there. So it can only go where there's this lower pressure. So you have to create some place that has enough lower pressure. You know. Um, you can understand that the, the pressure, if, if the other electrons are not, uh, the other atoms are under more pressure, the more pressure they're under, the less current you can carry, the less voltage difference, the less pressure difference. So you can't transfer. So you transfer it to the ones that exist, but as soon as you hit a point where there's no pressure uh, differential, then you're done moving the pressure. So it's just about the fact that you always need to have some lower pressure for it to move to. Um, let's just say that. So obviously the whole conductor, you know, if I connect a, the negative lead of a battery, the, the, 
the lead that has the high electron pressure, whatever I connect to it will become pressurized, will be at that voltage. But it can't go anywhere if you don't provide a conductor for it to travel through. So it tries to get through the atmosphere and some of it will leak out, but it's a tiny amount. So until you connect it to some place that has less electrons, it can't. It can't, it can't spread its pressure to things that are at the same pressure. It would be like, well, they're not really carrying energy. They're at a zero potential now, so they're just basically completing the loop. So what? they're not, never at a zero potential. So the voltage is always exists in the circuit, no matter where you go, until you get to like whatever the midpoint. So um, there's always less electrons on one end of the wire than there are on the other end of the wire, or there's no movement of electrons. There's no movement of the pressure. Whatever. I'm not sure if that would be the answer. But if you look in the field way and you think about pointing vectors around the wires, what you see is right. that both electrons going... So this is only true for the moment of induction, for the, the tiny moment that you're changing the pattern of the wire. So you put the electricity in, the wire's changing, it now looks different. The other wire sees that the other wire has changed and it changes to complement it. As soon as it complements it, it's over. There's no more effect. The effect is over. It becomes exactly what the other wire is and there's no further changes taking place. So unless you reverse the current, unless you take away the pressure and change the color again, you can't change the color of this wire. You can't have anything. And even if you do put an alternating current in and create an inductive voltage, the inductive voltage is minuscule compared to the voltage you can put through the conductor. So clearly, if you want to light the light bulb brightly, you can't do it through induction. You have to do it through conduction. And that's the argument. So the argument is, is that this inductive effect has nothing to do with the current moving through the wire. It has nothing to do with the pressure moving through the wire. The changes to the atoms taking place in the wire. To the load, and electrons coming back from the load are both carrying energy through the fields to the load. So again, it's just how silly do you want to make this? I mean, it's kind of obvious that the pressure is moving in a circle. It's not moving. There's no pressure moving from the positive end to the load. Okay, it's exactly the opposite. It's creating a downhill for the stream to flow in. If there's no downhill, the water doesn't flow. So to argue that somehow the downhill is, is pushing to the load, it's not pushing to the load. It's merely providing a place for the energy to go. The electrons have energy and they can go somewhere, then they will move and they will cause work. But if you don't allow them to go anywhere, they can't go anywhere and they don't have any meaningful capacity to do work. So I would say right. there's a qualitative difference, at least, in how you view the flow of energy. Right. So we just know it's a tiny amount of energy that's doing the induction thing. So all of this drawing only has to do with a tiny, tiny, minuscule portion, 1%, less than 1%, 0.01%, a tiny percentage of the electricity in any circuit will be uh, involved in uh, these inductive effects. They're tiny effects. Uh, depending on whether you take a field view or you take a like electrons pushing electrons going around. Yeah, but yeah, well, electrons have to push on electrons to create pressure. That's the voltage in the wire. The pressure can't be created unless the electrons are pushing on each other. It won't go through the wire if there's no pressure, and the pressure has to be created by you forcing electrons too close to each other. It has to happen that way. And again, the field effects are just changing how the wire looks to the universe. You're changing its appearance. It's like if I did make a, a, a hose, and it was just a simple argument that when the hose gets pressurized and pushes out a little bit, it would change color. Then you could get what I'm saying, right? As they, so it, as it goes narrow, it turns red. As it goes fat, it turns blue. Then you can understand that no matter what I do to it, I can see red, blue, red, blue. I can see what it's doing. 
And let's just say if I get hit by red light, I turn red. Yeah, it's that simple. So the more red light you hit me with, the redder I turn, you know, the more of me, uh, the more inductive current you can create. So that's why you use coils and all this stuff is you're trying to surround something with a field that's all red. So it turns really red. I can always refer back to my bike chain uh, example, right? Both the chains leaving the front paddle and coming back to the front paddle. So he uses a pretty poor example because, you know, in gravity, yes, the chain slumps and the chain that's really doing the work is the one going over the top because that's the one having gravity push it into the gears. The one at the bottom doesn't get pushed into the gears, therefore it doesn't do as much of the work and, you know, so it's not a very good example in gravity. Now, obviously, you just turn it sideways, and then you can make it work a little better as an example. Are contributing to the energy placed in the back wheel, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, in a bike, when you paddle, the top chain is rigid and the bottom chain is slacking. But imagine a system that the bottom chain was rigid and could also push. Yeah, yeah. so just imagine it. Turn the bicycle this way, yes, turn it flat, okay, so the chain slumps the same on both the up and down side, the left and right side, and then you get the idea that it doesn't matter, both sides are doing the work. Or a closed loop water pipe that water flow could both push and pull, both acts of pushing and pulling. So there is no pulling, there's just an absence of push. So obviously the water at the bottom of the hill okay it isn't some kind of pulling state the water isn't pulling now gravity is doing the work so it's doing the pushing but that's the whole point is that you just look for the push and the absence of push that's all there is in the universe there's push and absence of push there's no pull as a practical fact All right, should be continuing. Are transferring energy to the load. And that's what electrons are doing. They are, on one side, you're pushing them into the load. On the other side, you're pulling them away from the load. Mm. That's nice. In both cases. That's nice. That's nice. I like that. Uh, yeah, it's, but it has it's completely incompatible with this argument that it's the inductive effect, that is the, the field effect happening going out of the wire. Okay, at every location, the wire's charging. As the wire's charging, okay, his theory is, is that, yes, this is happening. Okay, out of the wire, there's a field being created. Now, the field's not being created, it's just being changed. My argument. Okay, obviously, no energy is being used because the energy is actually going through the frickin' wire. So, again, this, this the whole argument has to be somewhere they have to recognize that the pressure has to be going through the wire because the wire is what's going to create all of the the 99% of anything called current. <sighs> Shit. And it, and if we add the idea that like uh, the pulling and pushing is done through long range field interactions. So so again he's again trying to say that this long range field interactions are causing it when clearly it's not long range field interactions you're pushing an electron into the conductor it's field interactions inside the conductor not the ones it's radiating the ones that are inside of between the electrons so it's just the fields between the electrons that are conveying the pressure and again the side effect the fact that you change the conductor when you put electricity in it you're just saying again the electricity goes through the wire, it changes what the conductor looks like. That's it. And the looks like can affect something, but it's going to affect it a lot less than when the actual current shows up and really changes the other conductor. Then yeah. I think we're fully in agreement. Yeah, I think... I think uh, There's no agreement. It's pushing through the wire. Or, or it's either from the outside in or it's from the inside out. It can't be both that's the case and then we are fully in agreement but yeah i think like the my motive uh, i i yeah and then he'll point out how well i don't think it's a completely full agreement motivation in making both these videos was to reflect on the fact that i was taught 
and I taught circuits in a way right. that certainly... So, so they're still teaching it differently. They're still now, he's arguing, so he had his old view of electrons pushing in the wire, a necessary part, and now who's evolved? The Veritasium is saying that somehow he thinks the field created somehow moves the electrons through the wire, which the side effect is what's causing the electrons to move. No, not the, the side effect isn't doing that. I didn't understand these nuances. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, it was that surprise that led me to, to, to make the video. So right. Excited. Oh, yeah, again, and so he's made, whatever, three videos just trying to rephrase a premise that's on its face stupid in the sense that the inductive effect is completely a different thing than the conductive effect. The effect of conduction through a wire is a different function than the induction that happens merely as a side effect of conduction. So when you move electricity through a wire or through any metal thing or through anything, what you're doing is changing that material. You're changing it. And by changing it, it's like the, the, the electricity going through the atmosphere is creating the flash, the light that comes from the lightning bolt, right? But it, that effect, okay, isn't the light from the lightning bolt isn't causing the lightning to move through. So that's sort of what it's arguing. It's almost arguing that somehow the light coming off the lightning bolt is somehow causing the motion of the bolt to the earth actually goes the other way some people say but whatever it doesn't really matter yeah well it was an eye-opening conversation for me thanks to derek he is one smart dude but i, I mean just ew, 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 ew. he's one smart dude yeah he said thing i mean he, he made a single photon video where he just cheated all over the place takes a smart guy to do that. Oh, it didn't work with, uh, you know, if I made the experiment over a couple of days. Well, it didn't work. So I did it in five minutes instead, and it worked. At the end of the day, I think my view of charges pushing against each other, transferring energy from the source to the load, works because... Works? So it just matters whether it works. So all it matters is whether it works as a, whatever, a diagram for some bullshit to, because you want to make a circuit or something. So all of a sudden, who cares about the truth? <laughs> it works. I thought you were supposed to be getting to the truth. How does it really work? And I think it's obvious that lightning bolts aren't moved through the atmosphere by the light they admit. Because I never look at charges as marbles banging against each other. I always... Yes, it doesn't really matter though, does it? You could think marbles covered in spikes and then you could think of all kinds of springs you know you could think of lots of different ways to make the distinction between the field okay the stuff that's between the little stuff in the universe the energy frankly okay the stuff moving the speed of light that they're going to bounce back and forth the little bits are going to bounce between the electrons and obviously if i bring the electrons closer and closer more little bits are bouncing between them they're hitting them more often and that's more pressure and that's the pressure that everything is under in the universe. Everything in the universe is being bombarded by energy constantly. Constantly, constantly, constantly pushed around. And all you're doing is saying, where do I have an imbalance in the push? Where, is there, where are circumstances where there's more push going this way than that way? Then I'll see something move when that happens. I see charges and fields as one package where so again they're not one package one of them is in the you know it's the bb's you have a box that's the universe you have bb's in the box moving a constant speed and they never change their speed and then you put bits of matter electron and proton inside the box there's not one package their fields can extend forever. I would say though. So again, we know the fields extend forever in a pitiful way. <laughs> they don't do it very well. Uh, there's places in the universe where frankly nothing reflecting off me is going. Okay? And it's a huge part of the universe where no photon will go there.
you know, in a billion years, one per billion years. It would take a billion years for a photon to hit the little spot. I mean, there's suns right now in galaxies, they're radiating light, but it'd take a very long time, maybe 10 or 15 minutes before a photon hits. The only difference between my model and reality was that where I thought charge gradient was distributed throughout the entire wire. Clearly, every atom is aware of the charge potential, okay, the pressure. The atoms can't avoid the pressure, especially when you're doing high, low voltage and high amperage. You've got to understand that there's no way that the atoms inside the conductor aren't being pressurized, that they don't know they're under pressure. Of course, they have been changed. It's like everybody has to get the electricity cooties. It's a disease. You can't just make some atoms have the disease and all the other atoms don't catch the disease. It's catchy. So, but like I said, in the example of a very high voltage, you could probably get through the wire affecting very few atoms because it's moving in the direction so straight. It's like sound, the difference between sound and other disturbances in the atmosphere. The sound travels much straighter and more, more efficiently. It doesn't vibrate the entire atmosphere. It just vibrates the atom in front of it. And so high voltage can do that. High voltage has a narrow cone of of affecting everything else and low voltage low speed means you affect everything else so it's almost like the clay example in terms of measuring kinetic energy um, clearly what the clay demonstrates is is the higher the velocity the narrower the pressure you're always pushing pressure forward and so you go through the material much quicker than if you go in slow and you disturb a lot of more of material sideways in reality they were distributed over the surface they still push and pull so again so it's the only thing distributed over the surface is the signature of what's happening in the wire it's just telling you when the surface expands then it's negative when the surface contracts it's positive it's just telling you what's the condition of the wire inside so the surface changes yes but that change is a reflection of a change that happened in the wire. It happened in the wire first. Each other and the outcome is the same. And I'm not done. I bought a whole ton of cables and I'm gonna do Veritasium's original. So he's really no point, right? The other guy already did it. He's using this really thick stuff so he can't go very far anyway. <laughs> you know. Who knows what it, this is? is? Is this two conductor wire? We don't even know what it is. Um, but yeah, so the guy already did that, okay? The Alpha Phoenix guy already did this. So he's gonna redo the experiment already been done. That'll demonstrate you get a tiny voltage that will be inductive across from the battery to the light bulb. A tiny voltage jumps to the light bulb across the, the uh, atmospheric gap between the, the wires all right, a tiny voltage, and you just wait for the real voltage to show up, the real amperage, the real wattage, the real, the real pressure in the wire. All right, the inductive effect is tiny, um, the conductive effect is humongous. So that's the real truth. The inductive effect clearly is not causing the conductive effect, it's exactly the opposite. The conductive effect is causing the inductive effect. The conduction has to happen first for the induction to happen. That's the fact, and Veritasium is attempting to, through very uh, weaselly rhetoric, attempting to argue that somehow it's the other way around, that the inductive effect is causing the conductive effect, which is just plain nonsense. Test with the longest loop of wire ever done in the history of mankind. On YouTube, probably. Nah, it probably isn't going to be longer. Okay, the other guy was a, whatever, a half mile or something. I don't think you're going to beat that. So subscribe for that and definitely check my sponsor, Brilliant. Yeah, just the sponsors, commercials, all this bullshit. Money, 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 money. It's all about the fucking money. Yuck. All right. Again, I... You know, I wouldn't even mind if it was just about the fucking money if he just said, look, you know, if every, in every video he pointed out, I you know, donate, you know, or something. That would be better than this 
sell yourself to all these capitalists. Sell yourself to the shyster selling regurgitated, you know, Wikipedia pages. Yeah, fuck that. Anyway, I guess that'd be enough. Yeah. So, closing remarks. It's about the difference between induction and conduction. What's causing those effects? And I would say that pressure causes the conduction. The conduction causes a change in the field. The change in the field can create some induction. It's a tiny amount. The percentage of the profile of the energy, you know, it's a tiny symptom. It's like noise from an engine. It's not the engine. You know, it's a tiny little bit of noise. Yeah, you can make something move with the noise. But it's going to move a lot more when you let that 400 horsepower engine move it. So it's a huge difference in saying that you're lighting a light bulb through induction versus lighting the light bulb through conduction. That's what the subject is. And they've just fucked it all up, <laughs> you know, frankly. All right. Conduction causes induction not the other way around till the next time and such obviously the symptom the guy getting affected by the induction is creating conduction from the induction but understand it's a tiny amount of conduction nah.